Well, good morning, everybody. This is my first time to get to visit Rotary in North Carolina. So I'm a Midwesterner, and my wife and I are empty nesters. And we moved uh, here uh, two years ago in August of 2022 from Oklahoma City, where my wife is right now, because our daughter's having, middle daughter's having surgery. And uh, anyway, I'm excited. How many of you have used AI like you have played with it? You've been to ChatGPT or Gemini. So we got like four of us. Okay, that, that pretty much matches nationally because less than half of adults in the United States today have used AI themselves. And so here's what I will share. And let me first reassure you, having been taken to Rotary a number of times by my dad, I know we got to be out of here at 8.30, so we will not go long. Um, artificial intelligence represents the most significant technological advance in my lifetime. I was born in 70. To better understand and regulate it individually, that means you and me, we need to play with AI and share stories about it. And what I'm going to do today is share a few stories with you. Um, <laughs> we've just met. You have no idea who I am. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and why you might listen to me. But then the main part I want to do is just tell you some stories. Um, we're connected to Zoom, and I can't really get my phone as connected here. But I, I'd like to do a live demo. <clears throat> the app for ChatGPT, there's a bunch of tools. We'll talk about them. But ChatGPT is the one that really started to make headlines about a year and a half ago. I should know that exact date. We, I teach at Providence Day School as a middle school STEM teacher. And um, I used to suspect middle school teachers were crazy. I can confirm it now, for sure, especially with sixth grade boys. But I do love it. I teach sixth, seventh, and eighth. And I usually have sixth, seventh, and eighth graders in my class. Uh, we have a graduate of Providence Day who works for OpenAI, and he's actually in charge of all the data centers and setting those up. And so about a year and a half, well, it was the first year that I came here, the, um, the teacher who is in charge of our entrepreneurship program got him to come speak. And we did a podcast for our school. And this is right at the beginning. This is before so much hype. And this very, very smart computer engineer was saying at that time, yeah, we're about three to five years away from AGI. Now, that means artificial general intelligence. This means the computers are smarter than the human beings. And I was just like, really? <laughs> because I wasn't seeing it at that point. And so I have played with it, used it enough today. I can tell you stories, and maybe I will be able to, that'll just they'll make goosebumps on my while my arms stand up, because I'm like, I, I can't believe this. I can't believe it's done this. Um, so I'm going to give you a little homework. Spoiler, it is to play with these tools, OK? Uh, and then we'll have some time for Q&A. So why listen to me? Well, number one, Air Force Academy graduates tell the truth. And so uh, <laughs> my dad graduated in 63. I graduated in 92. Our youngest, Rachel, is class of 2027. She just finished her freshman year. It's so cool to be able to text your kids, right? I mean, when we were there, you could talk on the weekend, and I was only like limited to an hour, uh, just money-wise. Remember when it used to cost money to dial long distance, right? My wife taught in Germany with the Department of Defense for three years, and you know, not only did it cost a lot of money, there was a delay and all this stuff. Well, we just got a text from Rachel. This week, she vectored in a helicopter. She just shot flare guns. They started fires uh, with... Um, you know, flint and steel and Vaseline and cotton balls. And so anyway, it's cool. She, she came home for a half of her leave in June. And we got to go camp up in Montreat, or by Montreat. And uh, so dad was showing her little things, you know, and it's cool. So I'm also the son of a lifetime Rotarian and the grandson of one. Dad's in Manhattan, Kansas. And uh, he grew up in Powell, Wyoming. And so his dad was a Rexall pharmacist. and you know, lifetime Rotarian, and so I know Rotary is a fantastic organization, and I'm very thankful for the work that you all do. That's an old word, Rexall. It is, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I wish, because they have the Rexall sign, someone has bought it in Powell, it's in someone's backyard, it says Friars Pharmacy. And like, I need to get that. Like, wouldn't that be cool? Because 
yeah, everybody had their own little pharmacy. They had the soda fountain, the whole, the whole deal. So I, uh, most, most weeks, have a little podcast with my friend Jason Neifer. He's the director of the Montana Digital Academy, which is the statewide virtual school in Montana. And <clears throat> he and I have been buddies for quite a while. I think we have like 300 episodes or something crazy like that. And we talk about the news, okay, tech news. What's going on and how does it relate to schools? <sighs> Almost every day for the last year and a half, I have been using AI definitely multiple times a week. I use it to visualize images. I use it to edit essays. I have used it to write JavaScript programs, because I do teach coding to our middle schoolers. Secret, I don't know JavaScript, okay? But I have been able to verbally describe, here's what I want. Can you give me that code? And I test it, and I've had to tweak it. Some people think, oh, you can just, you know, Tell it to do it and it'll be a magical. No, I mean, it took like hours to do, but I have a program that runs on my website and I use it almost every day. What it does is it breaks up little posts that I want to do on social media. It breaks it into chunks. I quit Twitter in November because it became kind of a dumpster fire, but I, you know, I'm on threads and Mastodon and Facebook and these other things. Anyway, like, it's a superpower, okay? Every single one of us today, this is why I say it's going to change everybody's job, everybody's profession. It's going to be so challenging in school as teachers, right? Because if we continue to ask our kids to do the same thing we got asked to do, I mean, cheating is nothing new, right? But now it's phenomenal what you can ask. So anyway, I like to cook. That's going to be my first story, actually. And then... Uh, it's told us where to travel. We like adventures. My wife and I, like I said, are empty nesters. There's all kinds of stuff. So what the heck is going on with this thing? Some people in the media, and this is an important thing, I think, surprise, surprise, the media doesn't always tell us everything we need to know, and we can be misled, OK? Not to get, I'm not getting political with this. I'm just saying, like, critical thinking is really important, and whoever you hear from we always need to be thinking, especially today, when so much disinformation, fake pictures, fake video, right? You and I, assuming that we continue to live, because you know, you never know what's going to happen. But I mean, if we, you know, continue to live in these next few years, any of us are going to be able to speak words and create a video with the people we want to have in the video, and they, we can make them say anything we want. Like, that technology is here now. It's just not widely available. It's called Sora, is the program that OpenAI has. What the media will sometimes tell us is, oh, it's just fill in the blank. These are language models. They've read the entire internet, which, by the way, I have not done and I will not do, right? You won't either. Our brains are just limited in that way. But they predict what the next word will be, okay? And so I have heard many people say, that's all it is. It's like, do you all remember Mad Libs? Mm -hmm. Do you ever do those or have your kids do Mad Libs like on a trip? Remember when you used to have to do that on a trip? You didn't have these devices to pull out and, you know, so you'd get this piece of paper out, you'd fill in noun, verb, adjective. Yes, these are large language models, but the way that they are learning is, is mind-blowing, okay? I had an opportunity to go to school with some really, really smart people. One of the smartest people I have ever known happened to be my debate partner on the Air Force Academy debate team for my uh, junior year. His name is Bill Casebeer. His last duty assignment was working for DARPA. He was a program manager for the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. Bill got a dual doctorate at San Diego State in cognitive neuroscience and philosophy, because he came and taught philosophy at the academy. He worked for Lockheed Martin. Oh my gosh, what do they say about DARPA? They're like 20 years ahead. And so I have a podcast on my website. I should go listen to it. It was from the mid 2000s, and my friend Bill, was telling me about these things called neural networks and designing computers like the brain so that there's more nodes and there's more connections. 
I do not completely understand all of this. I do not want to misrepresent. Like, I teach middle school, okay? <laughs> Please don't ask me to do calculus today because I'm not going to do really well. I, I sort of ended at Calc 2, and I said, I think I'm going to be a fuzzy major. So I did poli sci and geography and minored in Spanish. But I do know this. It's so much more than fill in the blank, okay? So let me tell you a story. Um, I mainly use ChatGPT. There's another model that I would bring to your attention called Claude. It's a, co a company called Anthropic. The coders and programmers at Anthropic were a little concerned about the lack of ethics they were seeing in the companies they were in, which included Google. And so they founded Claude to try to be a real ethically driven AI company. But depending on what you read, and this stuff's always changing, some people are saying Claude is a superior model today, right? Because there's all these new models that come out. Okay, Gemini is what now they call Google's. It used to be Bard. It's confusing, right? These things are changing all the time. Microsoft has made huge investments in OpenAI, which has ChatGPT. Copilot, I use it a little bit. Um, perplexity is this new answer engine, and I'm playing with that a little bit. But the two that I use the most, Ideagram, most of the, the pictures that I've created with AI today, I, I pay for two things. This is a good thing to ask people, by the way. How many subscriptions do you have at your house? Uh, Netflix, uh, Disney Plus, uh, you know, paying Apple for iCloud. Okay, so if we continue to pay for something month after month, it, it's probably valuable. And I'm, you know, in the process with my wife of like, do you really need to have, you know, watch this or whatever? I pay for two things today. I pay for ChatGPT, twenty dollars a month. I pay for Ideagram, twenty dollars a month, because they're it's. But even if you don't pay for them, you can still use them. And now you can use the Frontier model, the most, the newest model. Okay, let's tell a story. Does anyone here like to cook? You guys like to smoke, barbecue, smoke. grill. So during COVID, that's how I use some of my nice government COVID money. I bought a smoker, right? I love Texas style brisket, my favorite thing. And I've learned it's not as big a deal around here in North Carolina, like pork and, you know, um, anyway, Texas style brisket's what I love. Well, I do all the shopping and all the cooking for our family. And so for Thanksgiving this year, um, I got this idea from a friend of mine who I saw on Facebook. We wanted to eat about six o'clock. And I had about, you know, eight things to make. <laughs> and so I said to ChatGPT, hey, these are the eight things I'm cooking. I have one oven. I got a microwave, I got a stove, I got a smoker. Give me my lineup. Boom. At 7.45 a.m. to 12 in the morning, prep time for the ingredients. And it's 12, I, I started my cranberry relish and it went all the way down to six o'clock. We ate at 6.15. That's kind of cool. And so as I'm encouraging you to play with these tools, and I'm sure there's plenty of folks alive today that are like, man, I am, I, this, is, this is all so fast, this is all so new. In addition to asking a question, like we were just talking about Hubble, and we can do that. Let's see if my phone's connected here. I'm just going to do a new chat GPT conversation. Hey, can you tell me a little history of the Hubble Space Telescope and also what it looks like NASA's going to do with it since it's not fully operational? The Hubble Space Telescope has captured many incredible images and made groundbreaking discoveries since its launch in 1990. One of the mysteries it helped uncover is the accelerated expansion of the universe, which led to the discovery of dark energy. This mysterious force makes up about 70% of the universe and is causing galaxies to move away from each other faster and faster. Okay, I'm gonna stop it. That's cool, okay? We've been able to do that for a while. You know, you can ask Google, you can search Bing, you know, ask it questions. But what I'm gonna encourage you to do, use it just like I did. You can download ChatGPT for free on your iPhone or Android. You tap the little headphone thing in the corner and you can just talk to it. Okay, is anybody a Star Trek fan? Okay, I'm really not. My wife is, I'm a Star Wars guy, okay? I was six when Star Wars episode whatever four came out. I love Star Wars. I wanted to be Luke Skywalker, like, that is me. 
Okay, I, it didn't quite work out that way. But uh, Star Trek, right? They talk to the computer all the time, right? Picard, computer, Earl Grey, hot. You know, okay. That's the what is that called? A replicator. You know. We are close to that day. I get so frustrated right now at Siri, and then I have Google um, speakers, the smart speakers in my house. They are not very smart. But when I talk to this, it's amazing. So I had a, a challenge. I needed to cook Thanksgiving dinner. I gave it specific information. It helped solve the problem. Um, here's something that happened yesterday. OK, or two days ago. Uh, I'm into a lot of stuff. Uh, one thing is actually emergency preparedness. Now, I don't know if you've been on YouTube and you go look at prepper videos. Be careful because there's all kinds of rabbit holes that we can fall down. But I tend to stay up on news a lot. And when you see FEMA and military organizations and other people saying our strategic enemies, China, Iran, Russia, have already penetrated our critical infrastructure, they're inside the power grid today. And if they want to bring it down, they can. I'm like, wow, what, what does that mean we do? So anyway, on a very practical note, I, you know, what does FEMA say, by the way, we should all have for food storage, minimum, everybody? Three well, it says three days <laughs> to start with, you know, three weeks better, three months better, but three days, okay? Our son and his wife, they live in Houston, Texas. You may know what happened in Houston last week? But I think it was just a tropical storm by the time it hit, right? Barrel? And they, he works at the Johnson Space Center um, for the magic team. They do the pre-engineering for the uncrewed SpaceX mission. So he leads the team that figures out where the robotic arm moves the stuff that SpaceX sends up. He and his wife lost power for less than a day. Okay, what has dad been giving him for his birthday and holidays lately? Here's water containers, son. Good, you're on the second floor, you know. He's only been there four years. They hadn't had a major storm. As of Friday, 800,000 people were still without power in Houston. And I heard yesterday, it's still a quarter of a million. Texas governor people are mad. OK, so anyway, I got a new storage thing. I wanted to make a video, because I have a little channel about prepping and thinking, look, it'd be good to have stuff to help your family and help others. I needed to know, how did I edit a video that's vertical? Because iMovie didn't do that. I asked ChatGPT, I said, hey, I want to edit this video. It's vertical. I want to put text on it. It said, oh, you need to use InShot. Never heard of that before. Oh, great. So I used it. I'm finishing up a book. I've written a couple books. And I've, I have been not finishing this book for 10 years. Okay? It's called Pocket Share Jesus, Be a Digital Witness for Christ. I do all this stuff at school about media. I teach my kids how to make video. We try to not be trapped in these rabbit holes. You know, I tell them, the moon landing really happened. <laughs> you know? Who did 2001 A Space Odyssey? Who was the director? Stanley, Stanley Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick wasn't hired by the government to fake it. You know? They would have had to kill thousands of people. All these people at NASA. So anyway, uh, my connection was, man, I'm, I'm a person of faith. I need to connect the dots. Have you ever seen a fuzzy picture before or tried to share a picture and it gets fuzzy? Well, for free now, you can upscale it up to four times. So this website, Upscale Media, write that one down. Like that one's totally, and all of these links are available in my slides, that, and then I'll send it to, to Christian and Jake. But I just used that because I paid somewhere like 5 or $10, you know, more than 10 years ago to have somebody create this book cover for me, but it's too small. So now I just got one that's four times as big and it looks awesome. And it was free to do that. My mother passed away uh, on Christmas Eve uh, a year ago from, well, a year and a half ago. It would have been 2022. Okay, it, was short, it was the same uh, year we moved here. <sighs> no, I did not tell AI, just write my mom's obituary. What I did was I wrote the best one I could. And then I said, can you shorten this? Because I wrote a long obituary. And that wasn't what the newspaper wanted in Manhattan, Kansas. And, and I, you know, I've written a lot of things, but how long do obituaries stay on the internet? Forever. Forever. That's what... 
funeral homes, I mean, among a lot of things, that's one of the things that they do. And so that is practical, that was helpful, and I don't think it was cheating, okay? Because I wrote it. It was my words, my stories. But I think it made it better. And I'll try to, I gotta get off this slide because it'll get emotional. But my mom was my editor when she was alive. She was a school teacher. And when I would write stuff, I didn't do it all through college, but there would still be times I'd say, Here, mom, you wanna take a look at this? That was cool. All right. Who has seen a bear in the woods? Okay. I told you, how am I doing on time? I told you that, uh, I've got eight minutes. When Rachel, our third child, was home from the Air Force Academy in June, we went camping in Montreat. Um, these are both real pictures, okay? That's really our tent uh, by Black Mountain. And we had heard when we were there, hey, you know, bears are around, bears are active. Well, sure enough, during the day, we're sitting there, and no kidding, a bear comes, a little yearling, I think, came trucking right down here. He was about to walk into our camp. Now, I did not go for my phone first, okay? I actually happened to have some bear spray, so I was like turning to get that, and then we let, yelled, and he got scared, and somebody said that <clears throat> that time, maybe it's still continuing, like the mamas are making the yearlings go on their own. So you got these, you know, yearling bears that aren't that. So, but I wanted to tell that story. So guess what I did? Well, I used AI. Now, I all, so that's not the real bear. That's not our real tent either. But I uploaded the picture of our tent. I said, hey, I want there to be a bear in here. And so what I did on Instagram, and you'll see this, is I tapped the button that said, I used AI to make this. I am disclosing that. I am not trying to trick people. There are lots of people who are trying to trick us. This capability is here now. It's been here for a long time. Photoshop, right? Is it important to know? I don't know that we have the National Enquirer in the you know, checkout line, but like basically every magazine cover you see is airbrushed. It's photoshopped. Okay? And I tell my kids, especially <clears throat> my middle school girls, none of these people look like that. It's all been airbrushed. But today, any of us can doctor a picture, can put something in there that wasn't there originally, and I think it's good for us to let people know, but we need to be aware that not everyone's going to tell us that. Okay? Um, I try to do some meditation, usually every day, not every day, but it's multiple times a week, and I like to share those verses from the Bible. And so I am blown away by the quality of the images I can create and the ways that I can be iterative. I can say, wait a second, I want you to show this or I want you to change this. I have done this lots of ways. I've done this with actual pictures that other people give me permission to use, my own pictures, but it's unbelievable. And I did a whole webinar a few months ago, you know, kind of talking about that process. Book studies, okay? As a teacher, or, and as a student, we know this is helpful, right? A study guide, okay? Love for you to read the whole book, but you know what? We're busy people. Can you give me the Cliff Notes version, right? So a year and a half ago, a year ago, our Sunday school class was doing a book study of a book called Grace Can Lead Us Home, A Christian Call to End Homelessness. Our church in Charlotte is in the process of converting our education wing into efficiency apartments for 21 adults, single adults, who've been experiencing homelessness. Because guess what? This is in uptown Charlotte. This is expensive property. And that building has been laying unused for decades. So we're reading this book, and I want to have a study guide. So I upload the book to Claude, and I say, Claude, I'm doing a class on chapter four. Can you give me a summary? Can you give me the key points? Can you give me the key vocabulary words? And can you give us discussion questions? And it did it in about 10 seconds. And it was good, because I had read the chapter. And as I did that, that lesson, somebody said, can you make one of those for each chapter that we're going to do? The ability to read an entire book in seconds and then give you the specific things that you want. 
that, that made the, 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 the goosebumps stand up. Because I'm a teacher and I prepare these kinds of things. So I don't think this is going to make me as a teacher lose my, lose my job and I'm going to, you know, everyone's just going to go online and go on AI. That'll happen. But my goodness, this saves time. My goodness, this can help me be more effective. My goodness, this can be transformative in a lot of different ways. I already mentioned coding. Um, here's a quick demo, and then we'll have like two minutes for questions. Yesterday, uh, does anyone have spiders like run around outside of their house? A lot of spider webs. I'm having to get the broom out and sweep them off. Okay, we got two golden retrievers. I know pesticides can be dangerous. So, just like that little demo I said, I said, "Hey, um, hey, good, this is I'll read. Hey, good morning. This is me talking to ChatGPT. I need you to put on your hat as an expert of all things related to pesticides and extermination of bugs and parasites in homes, including residences." And I go on to say, "We've got spiders. I got golden retrievers, but I don't want to pay an exterminator. I want to do it. What do I do?" And it said, "You need ortho home defense." Now, check everything that AI tells you, please. A few weeks or months ago, there was a thing where it had told somebody to eat glue or something, right? It hallucinates. It will make stuff up. By the way, it can tell you stories. It could tell you ghost stories. Ooh, tell me some ghost stories about Monroe, North Carolina. But this is very practical. Yesterday, and I went to Walmart, and I bought this. And later this morning, before it gets too hot, I'm going to go around my house. And it, tell, it, and it also told me exactly where I need to spray. So your homework is, I want you to play with AI. It's a challenge. Okay? And then tell some stories. Encourage your children, your grandchildren, your spouse, your colleagues to do the same thing because this is a big deal. It is definitely changing our world. So we have like two minutes. Yes, sir. Well, since AI, even just any kind of automation, makes us more stupid and less capable, and at the same time it makes other people much more competent in deceiving us, the question is how do we avoid doing how do you avoid the bad? How do we, how do we avoid the, the, the obvious <clears throat> end to that? Yeah, yeah. A less capable, less intelligent population. So, and a more. Uh, well, education, more education is so important, right? And I love how Rotary supports education, the scholarships, the encouragement for us to, to get educated. I don't think we're going to media literacy ourselves out of this. Every tool that we've ever had has potential, okay? Not to shock people, but I mean, I carry a knife with me. This is very helpful to me, okay? This is a pencil. I can have a pencil. It can be a dangerous weapon. I don't, I don't know the full answer to that, but I do know, like nuclear weapons, people who are really smart and a lot smarter than me say this poses an existential threat to our society. We have got to figure out how to have some regulation and boundaries around it, but ultimately these things are being put out into the wild, open source. Anyone can download it. I can run it on my computer. I can run it on my phone. So it's going to be challenging, but maybe it's going to solve, help us solve cancer. Maybe it's going to teach us how to do carbon capture so we can get more of this carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Maybe it's going to solve, you know, you fill in the blank. But I don't have the full answer, but I know that education is an important part. And that's why what we're doing today and telling stories about it's important. Because we don't want to just let people in Silicon Valley make all these decisions. And we don't want to trust them. That, oh, you guys will all do the right thing. Is that what Oppenheimer did and what we did with, you know, the bomb? No. We had government involvement. So, Did you have a question? Yeah. 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 Um, our students, we have them write an essay for us right. about their community service. Yes. How can we tell if it was chat GPT AI written or actually? Have, it turn, have them turn a video in as well. You won't necessarily well, be able to tell. Have them come talk to us. You have them come talk to you. It seems yeah. like we get 60 or 70 essays. Sure, sure. We eliminate from that. Yeah, yeah. Down to Co college counselors all over the, the country are facing the same kind of yeah. thing. I think you need to include a performative part of it, and it's good you have them come in person. But have the ones applying submit a video. My, our daughter, youngest daughter, had that happen for some of the engineering programs she applied to. She had to record a video. and. I think that we need to think about how to make it authentic. And so one short way might be, yes, I want your video, but give me a, a 60 second or a two minute video to accompany this as well, where I'm hearing you, seeing you articulate this, that might help. Yeah, and, and I mean, I know personally, like if, if 
I wrote my dad's obituary using chat GPT. Um, but like if I have something important, I'm not confident enough in my uh, uh, grammar abilities, you know, to send it out without it being edited or looked at. Yep. So chat GPT does that. It can help. So if, if they're, I, in, this, in this time, I would imagine it would be unusual for them not to use chat GPT. Oh yeah, they will be. You can assume that they that they yeah. will. So and, and I and I would too. Yeah. Like I, I would almost encourage it just because like the information they're putting in, like their hours and all that stuff, that's genuine. And it's just the grammar and stuff that they're kind of being helped with. Can be, can be. But okay, well we gotta get out of here. If you want these slides, uh, you can take a picture of this or whatever. AI.westfire.com. Um, Thank you for the opportunity to chat. Keep doing the great work you're doing with Rotary because we need Rotarians and we need all of the good public service and focus on character and integrity and community service that you all do. So thank you very much. And one last question. I have to ask it, it because you're just at the perfect intersection of this. I have young girls uh, yeah. at home who don't have any cell phones who kind of use right. the iPad sometimes. Yeah. How do you feel about what do you think the appropriate sort of age introduction to starting to use the, the cell phone and the smart tech and, and AI. And, and stuff. Eighth it's, grade can be a time to wait. There's a whole movement called wait till eighth. Um, I don't think you should give a kid the full on phone, right. you know, in elementary school. We had first graders with full on iPhones with no restrictions at my last school, you know. So uh, it's a good conversation to have, but we want our kids to be equipped to be fully literate and fully capable, and I don't. And if we wait till they're in college or they're graduate high school, or whatever, that's not going to be it. So eighth grade is a is a good one. But look look up uh, wait till eighth, and there's you know there's a whole lot of discussion around that. But uh, it's a partnership because it moves fast. Kids are going to always be smarter than I am, <laughs> and so it takes a village, and you you want to be having continued conversations about that. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.